Hello and welcome back to the Tinkercad video lesson series. We are going to be getting started on lesson three, which is learning about how to use holes and continuing to hone our skills in aligning and grouping objects to make a chair and a table on Tinkercad. To start off this video, I do want to feature a couple of cool cake projects that were sent to us from Tuesday's videos. So take a look at these cakes that you guys created. And let's go ahead and get started on a new project on Tinkercad. I went ahead and logged in. As you can see, I have my other two projects from the previous videos here. I'm going to go ahead and create my third design. As that loads up, I'm going to go ahead and rename it. Just like the cake for this video, I do want you guys to be creative and make your own variations of this project. But for the sake of the video, I'm going to go ahead and do a very traditional chair slash table. So I'm going to go ahead and start with a box. And I'm going to go ahead and stretch it to be like the base of my chair the seat of my chair rather. And then I'm going to lift it up off. And there's the seat of my chair. For the legs of my chair, I could do a couple of different things. These blocks right here with the horizontal lines through them, they are what we would call a hole, which is going to basically cut through our solid objects. So if I wanted to make four legs by just chopping this box up, let's see, I want to make it the same dimensions. 68, 71. Then I could just grab a hole and go ahead and stretch it so that it cuts through my entire shape. And then depending on how thick I want the legs, you can stretch this a little bit more. And then as you learned in that last video, I could align this to the center by selecting the hole, pressing shift and clicking on the box so that both are selected, and then using the align tool to go ahead and align that to the center. Now, if I went ahead and grouped both of these, so again, I could click and then use shift to select the other, or I could just draw a box around both of them to have both of them selected. When I press group, that's when it really looks like these objects are being cut in half. I'm actually going to wait to group because I want to go ahead and cut across vertically too. So I'm actually just going to duplicate this hole that I've already created. Remember that's command or control C, command or control V, and then I could just rotate it by using those little arrows on the side and then drag it towards the middle. Again, if I want to select just both of these two shapes, I can align that to the middle. Okay, now all I have left is these four corners that I could use as the legs of my chair. To make it actually look like it's been cut, I'm going to go ahead and select both of my holes and the solid and group it, and now I'm left with just the pieces that haven't been cut out by the holes. So now I could drag this to the middle, go ahead and drop down my seat on top of it, make sure it's selected, drop it down and move it around a little bit. So now I have my seat and my four legs, now I just need the back of my chair. Oops, there we go. So again, I'm going to grab another box. I'm going to make the dimensions the same. Let's see, I had 68 by 71. Actually, I only need the 71. And I'm going to go ahead and stretch that nice and tall and make it nice and thin so that way I could pick this up and move it onto the back of my chair. Nope, I think I mixed up my dimensions. Oh, nope, I just typed it in wrong. And of course I want to orbit around and make sure this is actually sitting on top of my shape. This is where it gets kind of tricky because I have to zoom out a little bit to actually be able to see everything on my die. Make sure it's dropped all the way in so it's not floating. Back. 
And then let's say I want to put some slits in my chair, so I'm going to use a box hole to go ahead and make that little slit design. Lift it up, scooch over, make sure it's actually inside of my box. All of that fun stuff. And similar to the cake, once I have one that I like, I can go ahead and copy and paste it and just move that second option over, paste it again, and now I have three holes that are the exact same. I just need to shift them around so they look more centered. And then again, if I go ahead and group all of these, well, those holes will actually cut all the way through, and now I have this whole chair that will move together instead of accidentally messing up my align. This also would help me if I decided I wanted to resize it at all. I could resize the whole thing as a whole instead of having to resize each piece. Let's say I want more chairs. Maybe I need four chairs sitting around a table. When I have this whole thing grouped, I'm selecting the whole thing. I can copy and paste, and now I have a second chair. I could go ahead and paste again and use this to rotate it and make it face the other direction if I wanted them to sit all the way. And just like I could change the dimensions, I could also type in here if I'm looking for a really precise angle. And then I could just paste this one since it's already rotated. Now, all I'm missing is a table for these chairs to sit around. To create the table, it's basically going to be like the first four steps of creating the chair, because you just need the top of the table and then the legs of the table. For the legs, you could also just create a smaller box and then copy and paste that for the four legs. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and lift this up. Actually, my table should be a little thinner. And then I could just create a small box here, and then paste it so I have four of them, and then go ahead and stick them under my table. To align it, this is where our align tool comes in handy, because I want it directly in the corner of my table. I'm going to select my tabletop and just one of my legs, so shift select. We've been using the align tool to align to the center. But if I want it to align to the side, I could also do that. And this, I actually aligned this perfectly just by eyeballing it. But I could click this button to align it to the corner and then the button on the other side. So let's do that with one of the other legs. Let's do it with this one. So I've selected this one. Now I need to select my tabletop. And then I go to align and I'm going to press the corner here and the corner here. Just kidding. Let's try that again. Corner here, I need to orbit around a little bit, and corner here, and that'll align up to that corner. And I think that went ahead and messed up my table up top. I do want to make it a little bit wider, but let's try aligning it again. Corner here, corner here. And I would go ahead and just repeat that all the way around. Let's do the same process over here. Select my table, select the leg. This corner, oh, and that one's already aligned too. So once I had all four of my legs in, I would go ahead and group my table so I don't end up accidentally messing up either of the legs. And you could go ahead and add decorations to your table. Maybe you add a vase. Maybe your table is a round table. Maybe you have stools instead of chairs. Maybe your chairs are a lot more colorful than mine. But I want to see what you guys come up with for this chair and table design. Go ahead and you can also send this one to our email so we can feature this design in our next video, the ones that come out on Tuesday. I hope that you guys are enjoying using Tinkercad so far, especially as you're learning more tools to come up with more intricate designs.